Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here coming to you live from the south. More specifically, standing in front of a car that's trying to drive in the middle of a parking lot. More specifically than that, we are here at the Dinosaur Store. Dinosaur Store, not the Dino Store, which would be the obvious pun, but the Dinosaur Store and Museum. Today, here in Cocoa Beach, Florida, I think we'll be invoking the EM rule and checking out this museum. Hey, look, it's Sporin Ryan. What is he doing here? Wandering around the parking lot. Why would he be here? So have you been to the Dino, I can't, see I keep wanting to say Dino Store. The Dino Shore Museum? Dino Shore, what? <laughs> the, there's, no, there's a gift shop at Universal in yes. the Jurassic Park section called the Dino Store. There is. Which I really appreciate that pun. I'm surprised they don't use it here. Maybe Universal has it, uh, has it copyrighted. They were here first. The dinosaur store was here first? No, no, a dino, the, the one in Universal was here first. Okay, so they probably can't rip yeah. off the name. Some of the stuff in here was here first. Oh, some of the stuff here was... Yeah, like on a meta level. Was in a, was here a, a mi millions, millions of years ago. Way back when. Way back when. I think, can you like buy chunks of dinosaurs in here? I think so, the, the woman just walked out with a bag full of uh, something. Like, and it looked like it was autographed too. A, so. a, like a bag full of like talons. Yes, and you can get it autographed by the Velociraptor itself. Now, how much? How much does a T Rex skull run these days? Well, folks at home, you're about to find out. <laughs> Have you been here before? I've been outside the building before. I've never actually been inside. <laughs> you're the just, building. You sort of say you're like, man, I wonder what it's like in there. Boy, we'll this is the weirdest <laughs> Walgreens I've ever <laughs> we'll, seen. We'll, we'll never know. But today we'll find out. Here in Cocoa Beach, Florida. So please. Follow us for just a little spoil. Oh, look at this. The Tomb of King Tut is in there as well. It's apparently not only a dinosaurs, museum of dinosaurs and ancient cultures. And it's also a family fun adventure zone. So that's pretty fun. <laughs> so here we are, the dinosaur store and museum. You can see the windows here full of bones. Got these uh, giant shark teeth there. That's some sort of some sort of giant bear right there. All right, we're headed in. Fragile items on display, you gotta be careful. Oh, look at this. Greeted here by this Triceratops. See, he's wearing his uh, heart necklace there for Valentine's Day, so. Triceratops, will you be my Valentine? These alligators up here on the wall are pretty amazing. Look at that gator head there. And the full replica there. It's about, it's $950, about $1,000. I, I, I feel like that's a good price. Not that I have $1,000 to spend on an alligator today, but if I did, it, it may be going home with me. But I think I might want this instead, this terrifying prehistoric fish up here. Have some uh, smaller preserved animals here. Get a, little, get a little piranha there in the case. All sorts of different uh, butterflies and moths. Which one do you want? What's this here? What sort of insect is that? It's a Hedopetrix delata. I don't know what the more common name for that is. And then they have the flying fox. Look at that. I always love with the bat skeletons how you can tell that the wings are just their giant hands. Ryan, do you have any like skulls or animal parts? In your home? Uh, none that are currently in use. What are they? <laughs> not in use? Yeah. There's not... a few that are in use right now. You have, you have animal? Oh, like living animals? Yes. Oh, okay. I did for a while uh, have a whole bunch of cat skulls because oh. two houses ago when we moved in, uh, I'm not sure what the people who used to own the house were doing, but when I mowed the lawn, I would routinely find cat skulls. What? 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 Well, not where you were hoping to go with this entire thing, but, but Dinosaur Museum, right? Dinosaur Museum, and Splorn Ryan is hoarding cat skulls. Yep, yeah, just like the birds. I do think it would be uh, fun to have some uh, taxidermy dinosaurs hanging on the wall. Yeah, look at this. Uh, I don't even know. I don't see a price tag on this. I don't know if this is for sale or just a decoration, but wouldn't that be so much fun to have that uh, hanging on a wall in your house? There's modern skulls, no prehistoric skulls in here, just some uh, 
Just some modern animals, animals that still exist today. Oh, it's a fox skull there. Chaos reigns. See if we can see if we can find a cat skull for uh, Ryan to add to his collection. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, just look at this. It's like a full Mosaurus skeleton just hanging from the rafters here. Pretty amazing. And they do have some fossils and prehistoric bones here. This is a mammoth leg bone. It says uh, $3,000, which seems, I mean, that's a lot of money, but it's, it's, it's a mammoth leg bone. There's only so many of those, uh, so many of those to go around. Some humanoid skulls here. I think that's a, I think that is a replica skull there. And uh, there's a mountain gorilla. See the difference between the brain. See, we, we have bigger brains than the mountain gorilla. They have more vicious teeth. I'd say it was a tie. But down here, it says everything in this case is a casting, so it's not an actual claw. But uh, yeah, you can get like the replicas of the different dinosaur claws. You can get, uh, what's a mega raptor claw there, and some of these fossilized items here. Oh, look at that, even have some uh, big footprint uh, print casts there. It says these are from uh, Grays Harbor City, Washington. All right, so we got our wristbands here. We're gonna take this uh, elevator here up to the actual museum. Let's head up here. There we go. This elevator's, this elevator's almost big enough to fit a dinosaur inside. Where are we going first? Uh, let's do two. Two, the dinosaur museum is two. Which side does it open on? Oh. Wow. Got two? Which side? Which side? Which side's gonna open? I'm gonna go here. You think this side? Yep, that's about the part of the course. <laughs> oh, look at this. This is such a weird drugstore. <laughs> look at this. It's a Parasophilus here. This is really cool. This is super cool. Look at, uh, yeah, just taking this in. Look at that pterosaur right there it looks especially vicious. Oh, and watch out there, Mama Parasophilus. Garden over eggs here. There's a bunch of just scorpions. Scorpions crawling all over those rocks. You don't want to get uh, scorpions in your eggs. This is the Torbosaurus tannery here. You can see he's actually, even though he's a skeleton, he's still hungry. Reaching up to snatch that little flying dinosaur out of the sky. We'll watch a movie in here called Violent Earth. But uh, watch out, there's violence hovering above too. Got that giant uh, pterodon in that nest. That little, little bird's nest. See the erupting volcanoes there. That could be bad news for these dinosaurs. Little stegosaurus here. And I'm noticing in these tableaus, there's just lots of little stuff going on, which I really enjoy. It's like a little flying dinosaur in that tree there. Some uh, some hatching eggs down over there. See back there is a Dilophosaurus chasing another dinosaur. Oh, and look at that little uh, little dino possum there. It's like he's taking that pine cone home. We have these skeletons here are actually in battle. See the. Uh, the Diplodocus there, the big sauropod, and then who's who's biting his tail? Well, you can be my bodyguard, and I can be your long lost pal. Do 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 do. You, I can call you Betty, and Betty, when you call me, you can call me Allosaurus. I love this mashup uh, world where you got skeleton dinosaurs roaming around and then, you know, skin having dinosaurs all existing in the same space. Yeah, you can see the dinosaurs there and everywhere you look, there's, there's mammals looking to, looking to take over. Okay, you can actually see the mammals actively, uh, actively taking over right here. This is a Reponymus. Reponomamus, Reponomamus, and uh, he's eating dinosaurs. This is a mammal that eats 
dinosaurs. You're gobbling up the poor little dinosaur there. He's been uh, cracking these eggs and eating the sweet treats inside. Oh my goodness. See the prehistoric ocean here. Different uh, terrifying prehistoric fish heads. Yikes, I've, I've said this before. One of the things that freaks me out about fish, their eyes have bones. You can see that. There's bones in their eye. So it's almost like they can still look at you even though they're just skeletons. And a song in its heart. A bone in its eye and a song in its heart. Here's the earliest tyrannosaur known as the Guan Long or crown lizard. You can see him there in his, uh, with his feathers. Of course, now we know the dinosaurs were covered in feathers, very bird-like. When I was a kid, they were, they were, they were more lizardy, but uh, they have evolved over the years. Or I guess they were always feather covered. We just, uh, we just didn't know yet. The Stegosaurus skeleton there. And interestingly enough, there is a Egyptian statue of Anubis looming above. I guess he's beckoning us to the uh, upper floor where they, uh, where they will uh, tell us about early civilizations. Of course, we're not done with the uh, dinosaurs yet. All sorts of fun stuff here, such as this uh, Camarasaurus. Camar Camarasaurus. Wonder, uh, wonder if he liked uh, taking, taking pictures. That was a really dumb dad joke. <laughs> and there's an authentic Campo di Cello meteorite. Now this is not the meteorite that destroyed the dinosaurs, but uh, who knows? This one could have could have clobbered a few on the way down. All right, I guess we head under this claw here into the Mesozoic era. Look at these! Look at these creatures. I don't. What is this? It almost reminds me, it just vaguely reminds me of like the, the, the evil dogs from Ghost, Ghostbusters. Zool? Yeah, like Zool, Zool yeah. Vince Glortha? Vince, the other one. So there's Zool and Vince? Vince. V-I-N-Z. Oh, Vince. Vince. I thought it was like Vince. I thought it was for years. <laughs> so I finally saw it written down, it's Vince. Okay, so this thing is the Canoganthus, known as the dog jaw. This is terrifying. Why did no one tell me about this thing? I've never seen this before, and it is the scariest little creature I've ever, I've ever met. Yeah, these dioramas are so alive. See like the purple toads there, and the dragonfly. And look at this over here, this turtle is amazing. This is, oh, I'm sorry, this is, Henotus is not a turtle. It was a curious reptile in the Placodont family. So not a turtle. It's like, hey, who are you calling a turtle? I, it looks like a turtle. It kind of looks like an alligator and a turtle, like, like mix. It's a show down in Texas before dinosaurs. So this is what Texas looked like before dinosaurs and way before people. You had a bunch of uh, Demetrodons walking around. And then, uh, oh, look at that creature there going into the pond. Yeah, imagine if these were still in Texas. Just hanging out at the local Bucky's. Somebody should paint big text in the back. <laughs> Another look into the sea. Got a sea locanth right there. You know, the uh, prehistoric fish that is actually still alive today. Looks like he's ready to snarf down a jellyfish. And here is the terror bird. It's a terrifying name for a terrifying animal. And I remember when I was a kid, I used to read the, the dinosaur books and it would show this guy and he'd be eating tiny horses, just gobbling up little horses, which is, uh, it was really scared me as a kid, just that a bird could eat horses. They were small horses, not full-size horses, but still terrifying. And he is a big, scary bird. If he is so terrifying, how come all these animals are gathered around him like a Disney princess? <laughs> well, yeah, there's like these little, little tiny mammals down here. Maybe he, this is a bug. maybe he only likes horses. Maybe these guys are not afraid of him because they're not tiny horses. It's a horse meat diet. <laughs> yeah, stick strictly to horse meat. Yes, hashtag birds eat horses. And uh, here's a modern terror bird. We have the uh, ostrich there. And a bird that's not known for being terrifying, but known for being adorable. We have a uh, a penguin there. 
I notice uh, this uh, penguin here, it says it's a Magellanic, Magellanic penguin. I don't know if it has different coloring or if maybe this is just like well, it's an older penguin. He has some of that gray to him. Yeah, there's some other flightless birds in here. The uh, emu there. Oh, there's a dodo. Dodo skeleton. And there's what the ostrich, uh, ostrich skeleton looks like. And one thing I notice is they have this huge hole here in their hips so they can pass those uh, giant eggs. Some feathered dinosaurs. These are all dinosaurs, not birds. As uh, bird-like as they may look. Oh, look at this guy. Some of these are pretty adorable. Like uh, Shavui here. Shavui, I think. Uh, Rahobis. Oh, watch out for tr for Trudon. He doesn't look he doesn't look uh, too cute. Trudon, Rahobis. These sound like Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon names. Oh, look at this guy. He's adorable. This little dinosaur here. Yi Hui. Which also sounds like a Pokemon name. Some other birds here in this central bird box. Down here have a red red-tailed hawk, and keeping with the theming of the museum, he is brutally tearing apart a blue jay. Here's the mineral cave where there are all sorts of fascinating minerals. So the amethyst geode there. Oh no, bats. Got these uh, fluttering bats. Check out uh, this uh, this hawk here who's caught himself a fish and I don't know, something about the look on the fish's face is the saddest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> like, he doesn't truly understand what's going on, but he uh, he knows that this is a, uh, a bad situation. There's a big chonky raccoon back there. And uh, recently, that's become one of my favorite things on Instagram is, uh, is videos of fat raccoons. And again, another case of the vicious eating the delicious. Back to uh, the dinosaurs here. And look at this, we walk under this fallen tree branch. You can see the dinosaur there, possibly some sort of raptor chasing these smaller dinosaurs across the fallen tree. Very cool. This is a Talaris. I, I thought this was an Ankylosaurus, but it's not. This is not an Ankylosaurus, but close. I actually did think it was an Ankylosaurus. And uh, apparently the Talaris here, you can actually get him to wag his tail. Hit the button there. Oh, can you see it back there? knocking those trees down. Wow. And look at this over here. This is a prehistoric sea snake. Paleophys Colosseus. Oh, you can see that. He's coiled and ready to strike. Gobbling up, gobbling up some of these sea locans here. That is actually terrifying. Wow. Look at it. Down here we have a Gigantosaurus vertebrae. It says, touch me gently. So we will very gently caress the uh, vertebrae there. This is actually a really helpful chart because it's it's more confusing than you think. What is a dinosaur? This is a dinosaur. This these flying guys, not a dinosaur. These swimming guys, not a dinosaur. So this is a dinosaur. He walks around. He doesn't fly. He doesn't swim. Really, he doesn't swim like this. He may go for a, a little dip every once in a while. But what we know is that hip bones must be shaped like a reptile's or bird bones. So. Uh, the dinosaur's legs must come straight out from under the body and not sprawl out like an iguana's legs. Okay. So the legs go straight down. That's how you tell. Straight down. If it's like this, like off to the side, then uh, 
then that is not a dinosaur. That actually makes a lot of sense. That's actually a really good way of explaining it. But the age of dinosaurs is done as we head into the dawn of man. Oh yeah, see the primitive Neanderthal man there. He fights off this vicious wolf. It kind of looks like the Gamork from Never Ending Story. And in this case, we have the evidence of human evolution there. The uh, Australopithecus there in the center. We have the uh, Neanderthal man bust. Just Neanderthals and humans are at least 99.5% identical. I don't know, I always, I, I always take some issue with them referring to Neanderthals as a separate species because I myself have, according to 23 and me, have a large amount of Neanderthal DNA. So I figure if, if my ancestors were able to breed with Neanderthals, therefore my ancestors are Neanderthals, it kind of makes me feel like they are the same species. I'm curious why they make that uh, distinction. But anyways, they do have a collection of skulls in here. And these are all specific skulls that were found. They have the names on them. This is the uh, Peking Man there. Over the little one there is the Hobbit, found in Indonesia, found in 2003. It was a very small race of, uh, of humans. And then this is, I've not heard of this one, the Australopithecus, the Nutcracker Man. I don't know why they called him the Nutcracker Man, if he like ate nuts or his mouth opened like a nutcracker. Yeah, there is the Kennewick Man. And then over there, one of the most famous early human skeletons. There's Lucy. And here is the difference, I guess, between uh, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. The main difference is that Neanderthals are, uh, they're shaped like me, basically. So, there, there, yeah. I can definitely see my uh, Neanderthal heritage by looking at that. But the fun is only beginning. I take the elevator up to the uh, early civilizations floor. I guess that's the next floor up. Oh, this time we're opening on the other side? Oh, look at this. We're already starting with the terrifying baboons. Again, people ask why I think baboons are terrifying. And I, I feel like it's self-evident. And actually, from up here, we have a pretty cool view back down on the dinosaurs. You can see these are the ones that were the dinosaurs was chasing the others across the fallen tree. There's actually some dinosaurs I can see from up here that I didn't even I didn't even notice when I was on the uh, the floor below. Every time I see a jackal, it reminds me of that movie, The Omen. I, I don't I, I hardly remember anything about the movie, but I just remember the line, his mother was a jackal. There's a spotted hyena. One thing I always I found fascinating about hyenas is they're actually a member of the cat family. I used to always just assume they were some type of dog, but uh, no, they're, they're kitties. There's an authentic taxidermied hippopotamus. Of course, it does mention some interesting things here about the hippopotamus. They, uh, one of the most dangerous animals in the world, and I definitely knew that, that they, uh, they killed more people a year than almost any other animal, which is, you know, sometimes you see them as kind of dopey, friendly type animals, but no, they're actually incredibly vicious, which, which shouldn't be a surprise when you look at that mouth full of teeth. Also, it says that they are the closest living relatives to whales and dolphins. So yeah, kind of a, uh, a big, angry whale with uh, feet. Got the tomb of King Tutankhamun in here. Obviously not the, uh, it's not actually in there. This is like replicas of uh, Tutankhamun's tomb. I think he actually, I know he toured back in like, I think the, the 70s he did like, a, late 70s he did like the national tour. I think, I could be wrong, I think they actually put him back. Like he's, like, I think you can maybe go see him in Egypt, but I think he's, I think he's in his actual like burial spot, like his tomb. You, could go, you actually could go to the tomb to see him. But uh, yeah, one of the most, of the most famous uh, ancient Egyptians of all time. Oh yeah, we have the whole extended tomb here. Here is the, uh, I guess, the sarcophagus that King Tut was on. And I was talking about 
how he toured, he traveled around the world, his dead body, his dead mummified body, and at some point, someone accidentally snapped the beard off the sarcophagus and then just glued it back on. They were like, oh crap, I'm gonna get in big trouble. So they found that it had just been stuck on there haphazardly with glue at some point. See these precious Egyptian yeah. artifacts here. And then down here we have uh, this mummy. It's a very interesting mummy. I've never seen one that looks quite like this. Where he's uh, it's very, very skinny and he's got certain parts of his, uh, his body exposed. And look at that, on the fingertips, you see he's got little, little, little finger caps on his individual fingers. And those little gold caps on his uh, toes as well. Yeah, whenever I visit an Egyptian museum, I always wonder if they have any actual mummies. And the answer is yes. These are not humans, but these are all mummies here. A mummified falcon there, mummified cat. Of course, cats were very important to the Egyptians. And there's a mummified ibis. And ibises are the uh, birds at uh, Disney World that uh, steal your french fries. Now, in addition to the mummified animals, they do have an authentic sarcophagus. I don't think this has an actual mummy inside. This mummy back here is, a, uh, I believe, a, a recreation but uh, I always saw, I would see all these sarcophaguses in museums and I always ask myself, what happened to the mummies? And apparently horrible things happened to the mummies. People in uh, different eras would uh, use the mummies for, for fueling train cars. They would uh, use the mummies to make paint. They would have unwrapping parties. They would even eat mummies because they believed uh, had certain properties. So. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot more sarcophaguses than there are mummies because people treated mummies very, uh, very poorly. There's the pre-Columbian gallery in here. Let's see the jaguars there. We have a statue of Quetzalcoatl, the uh, feathered serpent god here. You can see the silly little monkey there sitting on top of... Uh, Quetzalcoatl. And I'm always excited to see a giant Olmec head here. I actually have a replica of, a, of an old Olmec head, much smaller, in the bunker. It was a gift, uh, gift from my friend Adam the Woo, who uh, bought it at a, uh, a concrete shop in uh, near Mount Airy, North Carolina. And then into the ancient Chinese section here. Let's see some uh, terracotta warriors here at the end. Wow, I was not expecting that. The uh, dinosaur store and museum. The museum's actually larger than the store. I always don't know if I was expecting just maybe a few dinosaur sculptures in the back of a retail space, but no, that is a fully fleshed out museum uh, that we have here in Cocoa Beach. Yeah, actually uh, pretty uh, pretty excited when I got in there. I just was blown away by the museum. Some great exhibits, very knowledgeable staff, uh, just a lot of fun. Uh, I do think we're gonna, I'm gonna maybe go down the street a little bit. There's supposed to be a surf museum uh, that we're gonna head over and check out. You're out here in front of the uh, legendary Ron John Surf Shop. It says it's uh, one of a kind. And out front we have these, these uh, statues to water sport activities. It's the guy there on his uh, jet ski. You see the surfer there on the wave. So I guess the main surf shop is over there. But over in this smaller building, next door they have the florida surf museum so of course we're invoking the em rule i think we will check out the surf museum so i guess this is actually the rental building for ron johns you can rent a surfboard in case you don't want to make the uh make the, the big investment of getting your own surfboard or if you want to just try out surfing you can rent uh rent a surfboard. 
I don't know how much a surfboard would normally cost. I have no idea. You mean that we're not the, the typical surfing? Have, have you ever been surfing? <laughs> no. Does it look like I've been surfing? I've not, I've not been surfing either. I do like these shark buckets though. Those are cool. Oh yeah. Look at that. That that you can make some fun sand castles with that. Absolutely. So the surf museum does not have any admission. It's free entry here at the uh, surf shop. And you can see some uh, some boards used by famous surfers. Now, I don't know a lot of the famous surfers. This is Al Merrick's, or Ken, this is Kelly Slater's personal surfboard that comes from Al Merrick's surfboards. And this is Dick Catry's personal board. Again, um, I don't know that much about professional surfing. Some early surfboards here. And look at these uh, 1930s men swimsuit. It's made of wool and it has a belt. I, I bet that, I don't know. Is that, I bet that's uncomfortable. I don't think like wool is the best. Uh, best for for surfing see the 1920s surfboard here I'm almost afraid you'd get splinters on that wooden surfboard although I don't know are all surfboards made of wood we have here uh, some surfing toys this is surf Bob well, there's the back behind him you have the silver surfer I would say the silver surfer one of the more famous surfers in uh, in history you've seen the ship in a bottle but have you ever seen a surfer in a bottle you can see different surfing gear hanging from the ceiling some swim trunks there up on the wall next door we have the florida key lime pie company now ryan went in to grab a slice of key lime pie i noticed out here on the uh, front porch, there is a alligator hanging out here. What's the alligator's name? Sweetie. Sweetie? Now you can see she's got the uh, her uh, fingernails painted. She's wearing her pink shirt. Looks like she's taking a little bit of a nap right now. Just don't get in your face. Okay. Get her back too. She doesn't like to be pet on her face. Probably a lot of people don't. Let's see if you pet her back there or her tail. Sweetie. Oh, yeah. She's very relaxed. In the shop here you can pick up a little bit of uh, python jerky. Some uh, some dried snake meat. Apparently they're sold out. But apparently they do have camel jerky. So I figured since we're here in Cocoa Beach we might as well see the beach. I think we're gonna head over and check out to the uh, Cocoa Beach Pier. All right, and here we are at the Cocoa Beach Pier. Over here we can see the directions to different places. It says, uh, oh, Pittsburgh is 993 miles away. I was just in Pennsylvania you know, a few days ago. Yes, Kennedy Space Center's out this way. Orlando's 59 miles. New York City, 1,097 miles away it's uh, Ontario Canada 1602 miles so we're pretty far, pretty far from a lot pretty far from a lot of places now looking out on the beach here I don't see anyone surfing right now I was hoping maybe we could see some surfers you see the cruise ship out there never been on a cruise they they, they, they launched them uh, from nearby here, from Cape Cape Canaveral, I think is where they launched the cruise ships. I don't know. Leave a comment in the comment section. Would you guys ever want to see me on a cruise ship? I like have this feeling like I don't want to do it, but I, again, at the same time, I'm like, I don't know. I should try it out. I like new experiences, so uh, maybe someday we'll do a uh, do a cruise. Again, I, I'm interested in you guys if you guys are interested in actually seeing me do that or not. Well, look, there are some surfers here. These guys in there. They're surfboards, looking to uh, possibly catch some sort of wave. This guy's just, this guy's just, just taking a nap on his board, I think. And if you look a little further out there, that is the Kennedy Space Center. That is actually where they launch 
space rockets from. So I imagine it would just be unbelievable to come out here on the beach and actually watch one of those spacecraft uh, launch into space. Yeah, imagine this beach probably just packed full of people when they do the, uh, do the rocket launches. There's some surfers over here. Are they gonna catch this awesome wave? Oh, not awesome enough. Oh no, I guess, yeah, they must have passed that one up. They're like, this wave isn't radical enough for us. It's not, not dutical enough. Dutical, is that, is that a surfing term? It's not tubular. Enough. Tubular enough? <laughs> is this wave tubular enough? They're gonna hit this wave? I'm just repeating things like Michael Angela. <laughs> oh, 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 are they gonna ride the wave? Whether they want to or not. Oh, they're not doing the standing. You know, the. I, when I think of surfing, I think like you stand up on the board, but they're just like paddling through the waves. They're probably doing it right. They're probably waiting for the perfect wave. Or maybe they just enjoy going over the wave while laying on their surfboard. Oh, wait, she's, she's assuming the position. Oh, is she, are they getting ready? Oh, are they riding? No, 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 no. Oh, oh wait, this guy go. back here. Oh, he was thinking about riding that wave, but then he's like, no, this isn't this isn't nearly gnarly enough. Oh, the guy's doing it. The guy's doing it. He was surfing. Over that other guy. <laughs> Little tiny airplane. Okay, head over here to the end of the pier where we have the Riki Tiki Tavern. And I think we're gonna Grab a little bit of a uh, little bit of dinner here. All right, so we got a table here, at the end of the pier. You feel it moving a little bit. You feel the pier moving? Pier moving slightly. All right, so I got the Gator Melt. It is a Gator patty made into a burger. It's actual alligator. And what kind of alligator did you get, Ryan? Uh, I heard that they all taste like chicken, so I thought I'd just skip over. You just got that. chicken instead? So I actually love alligator meat, but I've never had like a gator patty. It's like ground up and made into like a, like a almost like a little gator hamburger there. That's what they're telling you. Mmm. Mmm, yeah. It's good. It tastes like gator sausage. Or kind of like a big slice of gator sausage on a bun. That is so good. Mmm. It's good to see I finally found someone who likes ketchup as much as I do. It's you, Jay, and myself, I think, that are the ketchup fans. Me, you, and Tampa Jay love ketchup? Yeah, yeah. He's up there, too. This coleslaw is actually really good. I don't know what's in it. It's almost like some sort of, like, spiciness, like some sort of maybe hot sauce in there, but that's actually surprisingly good. That's actually some of the best coleslaw I've ever had. <laughs> Oh, there he goes. That guy stood up. Oh, awesome. Yeah, standing out here on Cocoa Beach. You can see the uh, all the, uh, the cruise ships leaving. I don't know, it's Saturday night. I don't know if that's the night where all the cruise ships depart. See them vanishing off over the horizon. Of course, over there you have the, the where the space rockets launch, and you have the uh, the surfers. So so much entertainment here, sitting on the beach. You can watch the cruise ships, the surfers, the rocket ships. Enjoy them all from the comfort of the beach sand. But I uh, had a great day out here in uh, Cocoa Beach today. I was kind of looking to get away from the uh, theme parks for maybe a day. Um, Saturday is very busy. I was not looking at. Uh, at going to one of the parks today, but uh, we'll be here in Florida for a little bit. We will have uh, have some adventures, and uh, thank you guys so much for uh, joining along with me. Uh, it means a lot. There are people that do follow along with the adventures, that enjoy these videos on a daily basis. I have been putting out videos every day for uh, quite some time. I don't really know offhand when uh, I last missed. A, a upload. It will happen. It will happen soon, but uh, it's been a while. But uh, thank you guys. Don't want to get uh, don't want to get swept up by the surf here. But uh, thank you guys so much. 
Uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country, film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun, random stuff. If uh, you'd like to help support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. $3 or more to get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also, uh, selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop and doing personalized messages on Cameo. And of course, all those things help keep this surfer on the wave, this cruise ship on the water, and this rocket high in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag. So Lauren didn't even know. Oh, uh, Lauren called me one oh, time. Oh, hi, baby. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can I say hello? Hi. Oh, what a sweet yeah. baby.